but it's kind of kind of different. I was a 16-year-old rebellious young man, and my dad said, "You know, you're gonna learn how to respect those who are older and learn about work." And I was raised in the carpet business, so I actually thought he was gonna put me on a carpet crew. But he had a friend that was a mason contractor, and uh, he introduced me to him, and he put me to work. And uh, first three days, I came home uh, puking every day. <laughs> I worked so hard, and I was never called so many bad names in my life. This guy could put a whole sentence of cuss words together. And it sounded kind of halfway right, but uh, it, uh, that was the beginning. Now, you would have thought I would have ran from it, but actually, by the end of summer, I absolutely loved it. And um, when I got through with high school, I took a couple of college courses, and in the back of my mind, I thought, this is not for me. And uh, I actually went into my family's carpet business for a little while. That wasn't for me. I liked the outdoors. And when I got my chance to go back to the masonry world, after I married a Texas girl and moved to Texas, I jumped at it, and uh, the rest has been history. I uh, actually, I was in the field for a short period of time. Then I came into the, uh, his office operation, Al Brown Masonry, and became an estimator. And from estimating, he made me vice president of the company, so I did estimating and project managing, looked over some of the jobs, and uh, I learned a lot of do's and don'ts from the man. I still admire him to this day. And then March the 21st, 1989, I thought, you know, I can do this. It was on my birthday, and I found out I was really young and dumb, so, but that's how I got here. The biggest thing is getting started. It takes a lot of money, I found out. I didn't have a lot of money. And uh, so I remember putting my Astro van up for collateral uh, just so I can make payroll. I, I started the company with $40,000 and I got down to the last bag of beans. I came home one day, my wife said, you've got to get a paycheck. I went without a paycheck for almost six months. And I ended up getting a financial backer uh, and without him, I would not be where I'm at today. I'm indebted to him to this day. I don't owe him anything, but in my heart, I'm indebted. Well, I suppose um, when my son came into the business is uh, one of my most proud moments. I didn't force him in. In fact, I tried to discourage him. I paid him 50 cents an hour when he was 10 years old, uh, counting uh, anchors. So I thought, no way he'll ever come in. But uh, that, was, that was a very proud moment. Um, another proud moment is when I became an officer of MCAA. Um, this is my 30th convention to come to. So I've been involved in, for a long time, but I never really thought I would ever become an officer much less president, but those were proud moments. And um, as you think, I could go on and on. Time wouldn't oh, allow it, on. but uh, uh, when you uh, top out a 38-story building, brick all the way to the top, and you go to the top and out party and your people's excited, it makes you proud. And then you go and top out a 42-story and you go to the top and out party and your people is all excited it's a, it's a great feeling. And you go out to job sites, you have people that's worked for you for 29 years and they come up and give you hugs instead of shaking your hand. That makes me proud uh, that I've got a company that has grown as a family and uh, they're comfortable with me and of course I'm comfortable with them. But uh, just being a part of this industry it's hard to be humble when the industry is so great. <laughs> many, many. <laughs> First of all, I have money. <laughs> no, I, uh, 
Probably the, the biggest piece of advice is uh, listen, uh, get involved in your industry. Uh, the industry gives to you and I feel very strong that you should give back. And um, probably one of my regrets, I didn't get involved as heavily as I probably should have. I'd come to the conventions, but also had a lot of fun rather than getting really involved. But uh, I would definitely encourage involvement as soon as you can. And not only on a national level, of course, but state level, local level. Um, the other thing, getting financial advice. I made a lot of mistakes. And if I had all the money that I lost with bad mistakes, hey, I may just buy us a jet, you know, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, bottom line is, is learn to listen to those who have more experience. But see, when I was young and going in business, I had this vision. And rather than listen, I was kind of hard headed. I've mellowed out now, but looking back, if I'd have just stopped and listened more, I'd have been better off. Ask a lot of questions. Without manpower, it's, um, it is unbelievable at the manpower shortage that we have. And it's something that affects us from coast to coast. Uh, probably the only part of our country that would say they've got a good manpower supply would be North Carolina due to their uh, great apprenticeship program. But in most other parts of the country, uh, getting young people into our industry is a phenomenal challenge. I think we're making some changes and it's going to take a while for us to reap the benefits. But uh, once we get the manpower, I hope we retain our uh, market share. That's another challenge ahead of us. We cannot sit back and not talk about our product. We've got to uh, share the pluses about it and there are many. It's the most sustainable product out there, most beautiful, long lasting. Uh, if you want something with character, it's not with ethos. I hope I can say that. <laughs> I hope you don't go beep beep on that one because it's the truth. Uh, and. I mean, you, you look at the buildings many years after they're built. Go to Washington, D.C., look at our Capitol. That's not out of two befores. That's out of masonry. And it's beautiful to this day. Well, very similar to that that I would give young Mackey. <laughs> um, Try to connect to someone that you feel comfortable with and learn from them. Don't go straight into the office. A lot of young people, especially in today's time, uh, we're in high tech world. And so everybody wants to make sure they're sitting behind a computer. Uh, the fact of the matter is uh, they need to know what they're looking at on that computer. And the best place to do that is to go out into the field and work, uh, be on the job site. Uh, learn how the pieces go together and the names of the pieces. Now you'll get a lot of tricks pulled on you. I can remember my first day on the field and the guy told me to go get a bucket of head joints. And 15 minutes later, uh, he was cussing me because I wasn't back. Well, I was doing what he was telling me. To only find out <laughs> those head joints are on the wall. But uh, those are the things you learn out there. And then when you come into the office, you become a very valuable person. And I think it's very, very important that they work for someone else before they even think about going in business for themselves. Now, I will say this to every young person. It's a great industry to make a living and to raise a family in. And I would strongly encourage it. Uh, I can assure them, as you drive down the roads and the streets and the highways, it makes you so proud to tell your kids, and now I get to tell my grandkids, I did that. Look how beautiful that is. My wife gets on to me to this day, but uh, she's getting used to it. You know, I always think of a legacy. 
after I'm dead and gone. And uh, You're not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere, not right now. <laughs> I, uh, I've still got a lot of things I want to accomplish. But uh, I hope I'm known for uh, of being somebody that is not afraid of change and not afraid to get other people to think about change. Uh, teaching the young people. I have a very young staff in my company today and uh, I take a lot of pride in the fact that we was able to teach them and uh, I hope I'm known for that. I hope I leave behind a company that people will say that company is going to last for a long, long time because of the age of the people. And uh, I hope uh, People will remember me as someone that was willing to be involved in the industry. When I was president of MCAA, some of the worst economic times that we've had, well, in my lifetime anyhow, I, I didn't live in the Great Depression, but uh, it couldn't have been much worse. And, uh, but I was willing to travel the country to encourage us, to try to let us know, hey, this is a time that we can prepare for the better days. And I think we have. And um, I love masonry. And if I'm not remembered for anything else, that's the one thing I hope I'm remembered about. I love masonry. And it is the right product to build with. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I, uh, from a rebellious 16 year old <laughs> uh, to now, I traveled a, a long ways, a lot of crooked roads, and uh, I never dreamed I would be in a Hall of Fame, and especially Masonry Hall of Fame. Um, when I was president, this was one of my ideas of getting started because I felt we was lacking maybe pride in our industry, and, and I wanted us to be proud of who we are and what we're all about. And there was a lot of great people. My hero in my younger days in the masonry business was uh, D. Brown. Uh, I lived 100 miles from him, and uh, he always called me kid. He never did call me by my name. I'll never forget the first time I came to uh, my very first convention. He knew who I was, and he walked up to me and he said, well, I hope you learn how to put more money in your bids. He thought I was bidding too cheap, you know? But now to be in the Hall of Fame with a man that was your hero, um, that's, uh, that's amazing. And I mean, there's times I sit and think about it. and My wife will tell you, I almost get emotional about it because uh, this is something that you know didn't happen overnight, but uh, all of a sudden it happened and it makes you look back. And when you look back, you go, mm, this is amazing. But I hope it will be an encouragement to my son and um, that he will one day uh, be in the Hall of Fame, you know? And I hope I'm alive when it happens because I'll be happier for him than for me. But uh, it, it's neat, it, uh, I'm honored. But at the same time, I'm very humbled that, uh, that I'm joining such a great, great group of guys and, and going in with a magnificent set of guys. And uh, I guess one thing I can say, I'll be remembered. <laughs> I'm in the Hall of Fame, you know? And uh, it's, uh, I hope uh, many more will, will follow in the steps and will join some of us old guys. And, uh, there's other honors you hope you get, you know. As I get older, uh, you start thinking about the end of your life, you know. And you start thinking, hey, I hope I live my life well enough to, to go to heaven. So I was asked the other day, was well, there anything else you want? I said, yeah. <laughs> I, want a, I want a mansion out of granite uh, in that beautiful city. And if I can get a pink Cadillac with it, I'll be happy, you know. <laughs> and uh, but this is great. It means a bunch to me and a bunch to my family. And uh, when you go through tough times and you work hard, you spend a lot of hours, and then something like this happens, 
It makes those hours shorter, those tough times easier as you look back. Thank you.